Joining me today is Jerry Posner, personal strength coach, training specialist, conference speaker, author, and consultant. Uh, according to his website, Jerry is a skilled teacher in the fields of customer service, leadership, communication, and stress management. And along with those topics come a bunch of subtopics and situations and different um, ways of coping with e challenges in each. And um, Jerry, I understand that your um, strategy is not so much offering canned presentations, but actually tailoring um, your different presentations, whatever the subject matter to the actual audience that you are speaking with, correct? That's right. And, uh, and thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So yeah, I think that as a keynote speaker, uh, a conference speaker and um, someone who develops uh, different types of workshops and seminars and lectures for, for corporate clients, um, as well as uh, educational groups, many different types of clients. Um, it really, it's important to recognize the needs of the client. That is, uh, sometimes it's managing stress, which is a big issue. Um, you know, certainly we live in, in challenging times and being able to successfully manage the stress response is really what it is. It's managing the stress response. You can manage the stress response, which is the stress trigger, the flight or fight response, triggered generally by the perception that something bad is going to happen, uh, a fear, uh, a threat. Mm -hmm. And often the system in the brain, the limbic system, which has those stress triggers, often overreacts or it reacts to stimuli in a way that is not appropriate to modern day. And so that's a big topic. Um, I, do a, I do regular lectures at a wellness resort in Western Massachusetts uh, called Canyon Ranch. Mm -hmm. And the, um, my stress topic um, is called the art and science of keeping your cool. And it's about how to keep cool when your limbic system goes a little uh, bonkers because something is, uh, is stressing you or worrying you. So there are uh, techniques and strategies that work for most people. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I tend to be more strategic than theoretical. Um, I'm a, a tireless researcher. I continually research the uh, behavioral and psychological and neurological uh, and academic uh, literature and research in areas such as uh, the well positive psychology, which is essentially the study of happiness and well-being. Well-being is a very popular topic and, um, and managing stress, of course, and, and ways to achieve goals. Um, as I like to put it, ways to increase the likelihood of positive outcomes uh, in your work, in your family, in your life. So in order to achieve that, you have to think, well, what are the positive outcomes that I want? Mm -hmm. uh, do I have habits that I would like to uh, modify? Do I have a specific goal that I want to achieve, uh, a change of some kind? So um, that's a very long answer to your question about uh, customizing my work, which I do. Thank you. And so let's talk about uh, what parents can expect on Parent University on Saturday, March the 26th. You are uh, the initial speaker giving the keynote address. And um, so tell us a little bit about that, what parents can expect to learn and find out. Well, I'm really excited to be giving um, my address called The Practical Power of Gratitude. This is probably my singular most popular uh, lecture or keynote or workshop. And the reason for that is because the research, um, psychological, neurological, behavioral, academic, in what increases the likelihood of a variety of positive outcomes, whether it's managing stress, um, whether it's improved sleep, um, even improved uh, immune system functioning, uh, resilience, improved relationships. There's literally a, a laundry list of realistically potential benefits from a little gratitude practice every day. So what I'm really advocating here, and I'll admit I am strongly biased because my own uh, work as a, uh, as a strategic coach where I work one-on-one -on -one with people, as well as feedback I've gotten from hundreds of these lectures is that for most people, it works really well 
with an investment of maybe four minutes a day, three minutes a day, five minutes a day, or even not every day. So I have a series of tools. I call them gratitudes, gratitudes, and they're very simple. They're easy. They're fun. Um, they don't take a lot of energy, and the cumulative benefit from doing these is way out of proportion to the amount of uh, of time or or effort that's put into these uh, these strategies. Mm-hmm. There. So can can you give us just just one little sneak peek example of, of one you'll be well the about? most. The most popular strategy is the gratitude journal, where every day or most days uh, you write um, five things that you're happy about, that make you feel grateful, that you appreciate, could be people, could be a song you heard, could be a meal you had, could be something good that happened to you that day. It could be you're alive, you can walk, you can talk, you have friends, but specific things, Mm -hmm. you know, think of specific things. And by doing this, which quite frankly is attention training, you are literally training your attention to notice things that already exist in your world that you would feel really happy about if you notice them. Um, Like I was thinking that if you start doing that, then um, pretty soon you'll notice a pattern and maybe start thinking, well, maybe I need to focus my attention a little more on this that makes me happy. Well, you'll notice you'll you'll notice it more. You'll yeah. notice it more automatically. Um, I was going to say, like Canadian singer-songwriter Joni Mitchell uh, wrote in her song, Big Yellow Taxi, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? Yep. Um, well, this is the opposite of that. This is uh, knowing what you've got while you've got it and being able to enjoy it and appreciate it. But there are many benefits to this. Um, certainly there is that you start noticing it more and that can result in a feeling of more uh, emotional security, could be higher self-esteem, a greater sense of abundance, more generosity, more empathy, more compassion. All of these things come from an awareness of that which is good in your life. And it's not a band-aid over things that are not good, because there is, is not good, too. Uh, but it's the ability to be balanced, um, not to uh, forget that in the midst of adversity, you have resources, uh, you have uh, friends, you have loved ones, you have food, you have shelter, you know, you have things. And to, ex- to um, be more aware of those. So one could say that gratitude work is attention training um, or mindfulness training. I mean, mindfulness or being present very trendy right now. Mm-hmm. You know, mindfulness means be aware of where you are, you know, be aware of your thoughts, be aware of things. And this also is, is kind of a mindfulness, uh, has a mindfulness component to it. It is in my work, uh, and I've been doing this for over 30 years, so I have a lot of data to call upon. This is probably the best cost benefit ratio of just about any practice, you know, to make your life better or to uh, be a more positive person or happier or less stressed. Um, it's just, uh, so, so this is gonna be what I'm talking about uh, for, the, uh, for the keynote. I have handouts for everybody, so it's all documented. You could take it home with you, the, uh, the gratitudes mm-hmm. and, uh, and some other suggestions. So um, it's really a great, uh, it's really a great topic. Right. So then if, if someone attends the keynote and then learns some strategies and maybe wants to, after implementing them, make a change in his life, um, they can also go to your breakout session and where you'll be talking about how change can be a positive thing, even some though sometimes we tend to look at uh, change as negative. Well, you really did say it, Dennis. Um, it's about how we look at it and our, our biases um, that is our preconceived notions, our, our cognitive biases, uh, play into how we deal with change. So actually, I begin the, uh, the name of the program is Thriving in the Midst of Change. So I will say to the attendees, fill in the blank. Change is blank. And if you think about the first thing that comes to mind, is it negative? Is it positive? Is it neutral? Um, how do you look at it? Because change is part of existence. There's always change. Um, 
there are so many uh, moving parts to life and things do not stay the same. That's not the nature of life on earth where we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, jobs change, families change, um, finances change, uh, interests change, lots of things change. So this is about, first of all, recognizing what are your biases about change? Mm -hmm. And do you have a negative bias? And if so, here are some ways that you can change it. And again, there's, um, there's a little bit more about stress management in thriving in the midst of change, because change is often a stress trigger for people, even though it doesn't have to be, but it often is. So there's a little bit more in depth about managing stress and then um, recognizing that we sometimes overestimate the, uh, the threat of change. That is, we are afraid or uh, we expect the worst, even though that may not in fact be the, what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And we often underestimate our ability to deal with change or cope with change or navigate change because quite frankly, here we are and we've already been through a lot of changes and we have survived all of them and we have probably benefited from them. And that's another thing to recognize what happened in the past, that a change of some kind that you thought was gonna be terrible that turned out to be great. And often that's the case. In mm -hmm. business, you know, it's true all the time. Certainly true in, in, in life. Um, like I had a client, a, a restaurant client that would introduce uh, new uniforms, like, you know, new, uh, new shirts. And everyone complained about the show, what's wrong with the old shirts? You know, we don't like these. And then they'd wear them and they go, oh, these are great. You know, oh, these are the best <laughs> thing ever. Mm -hmm. And that's not an uncommon thing that happens. So um, this is really about taking a rational perspective uh, on, on change mm -hmm. and uh, taking the bias that is developing the bias that whatever is going to happen, you're, you're, going, to navigate, you're going to navigate it and you're going to thrive. I think that's very important. I also think it's important uh, because a lot of times, you know, people that don't like change will do everything they can to prevent change. But then at some point you realize it's inevitable. It's going to happen. So, you know, some change, you know, you control most change. You don't. That's uh, that's a good point. Um, there are some things that we can control and some things that we can't. And, uh, you know, we, we can't control the weather, but we could control what we do on a rainy day. Um, you know, we can't control the ups and downs of the stock market, but we could control um, how we allocate uh, our funds. Um, so, yes, it's, it's about recognizing the areas that we can control and exercising uh, intelligent, rational uh, control based on the, the outcomes that we want. You know, if we want to be happy, there are things that we can do to increase that likelihood. Um, if, and there are things that we can do that, that can decrease the likelihood. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very important to understand and to recognize the reality of, of life, that mm -hmm. there are things you can control and you want to spend time on that. There are things that you can't control. Don't spend too much time on those <laughs> things. <laughs> Just figure out your best reaction to it. <laughs> Yeah, or response. Yeah, mm -hmm. how to respond, you know, to respond. Respond suggests um, a, a conscious action. React suggests uh, an automatic uh, reaction, uh, habitual, that may or may not be good. Sure. You know, it depends on how good your habits are. Yeah. So we're very, very much looking forward to um, your presentations on Saturday, March 26th at the Stoneham Middle School. Um, tell us a little bit about your background, about how um, you got into coaching and teaching and, and why you think it's important, why you do what you do. Well, that's a really long story, Dennis, as they're, they're all lots of long stories. But I'll tell you briefly, um, I had a fairly violent near-death experience when I was 23 years old. It was a... Uh, a home invasion kind of situation and a, a case of mistaken identity. Um, these people were hired to murder someone. This was in Boston and I was not the person, but I was in a place where that person was expected to be and it was very violent and, uh, and I survived. And for a few weeks after that, I was remarkably happy 
that is certain anxieties or worries that that you know I had uh, seem to not be there, and I just seem to be so grateful for being alive. And I liked that feeling of being grateful for being alive, and I became very interested. And how do people become more positive or become um, more rational? Um, so I became very interested in this and I started studying it in a variety of ways. Uh, my actual uh, college degree is um, communications. I was, a, I was a mass communications major uh, from Emerson College in Boston. And um, I did work in, in media, in uh, radio and television and uh, audio production, which I was very interested in, but, but this, this kind of shook my world and I became very interested in this and I pursued it in many different directions and ultimately came to the conclusion that what you believe is very important, that you could believe different things and your beliefs have an, have a way to organize data that comes into your, your mind through your senses. So beliefs, biases, you know, basically the same thing. So I became interested in how do you cultivate a positive bias? How do you cultivate a more positive outlook or a more positive attitude? And I started researching this uh, a lot and I started writing about it. Um, I, I uh, published a magazine called The Positive Times. I had a radio show called Positive Radio. I had a local TV show called Positive Television. I really into the positive mm -hmm. thing. Wrote a couple of books and um, I started getting hired to do uh, speaking engagements. I started developing workshops and seminars in the early 1990s. Um, I got a call from Canyon Ranch in the Berkshires that they needed a speaker to substitute for someone that was unable to speak. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do it and they liked what I did. And um, uh, 2,500 uh, lectures later, I'm, I'm still doing it. And I've met people from all over the world and many of them or some of them had hired me for their businesses. And that's pretty much how my, my business as a, as a lecturer and a speaker. And then I started doing one-on-one -on -one work as uh, I call it strategic coach, mm -hmm. where I help people develop strategies to achieve their, their outcomes. And um, it's important because people sometimes just need a coach, um, someone to encourage them, give them advice, give them feedback and, um, and help them along the way of what it is that they want to accomplish. Uh, for me, uh, it's extremely rewarding to be able to do this work. I mean, I'm grateful every day that I get to do this work. And of course, by doing the work, <laughs> it reinforces it in me too. So I'm you know, always thinking about gratitude and ways to um, be more positive, more rational, mm -hmm. um, be a better spouse, a better um, friend, a better citizen, better helper, just ways to make life better. Um, that really uh, beats the alternative. Absolutely. <laughs> um, finally, I wanted to ask you about uh, Parent University itself. Um, why did you decide to uh, accept the invitation to speak? Why do you think uh, something like this is important? Well, I did a parent university job a couple of years ago um, in a neighboring community, and it was very successful. Mm -hmm. And I found the audience to be very responsive and very interested in these topics. It's the same, it's the same program, actually. Mm -hmm. I did the Practical Power of Gratitude as the keynote, and I did Thriving in the Midst of Change as the breakouts. And um, if, if you're a parent, you've got your own set of challenges. Um, my parents certainly did, and, and you, you probably do too. And it's just a, a privilege to be able to bring this material as not only can it be very useful in parenting, but useful in, in just about every application. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really a, a privilege and, and a pleasure to be able to, uh, to do this. Well, Jerry, I appreciate you joining me today, and I uh, can't wait to see your presentation on Saturday, March 26th at the Stoneham Central Middle School. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Dennis, and uh, look forward to meeting you in person. Yeah. So, um, all righty. Thanks again for having me. Anytime. Thanks. Have a great day.